Coders, welcome back to the full app walkthrough series. We last left off in our uh, video together having a successful login screen component that can take us to the all blogs page with some screen navigation. And we could do this based off of making an API call to log in. If we get a token, we used async storage in the last video to store that information. And we can begin propagating a token value across our application. I'm going to go in a little bit further on how to do some cool um, navigating based on token values. Because when this app loads, if someone's already logged in once, we probably want to persist that login and go ahead and push them to the next screen. We could do our normal logic that you guys have tried to before using an async component did mount right here, where we can say, hey, let's go ahead and let our async storage helper function get user, get a user if they exist and they have the role admin, which they should if they've logged into my particular API demo. Um, then go ahead and navigate the all blog screen. This is some logic you probably use in this point in the curriculum in your React applications. But we'll notice that there's one downside to doing it this way. Well, this this way could possibly work for what you're looking, and it's in for all intents and purposes a valid solution. If I reload my app, it should have a token. If not, we'll log in with one. No, oh, it it had a token. Okay, so it had a user in async storage that so have logged in and not cleared it. But the problem here is because we're using one stack navigator. Look at what ends up happening. We get to the all blog screens expected, but we provide the user with this back button with the way React Navigation works to go back to the login screen. And if they do that, uh-oh, they're back on the login screen and have to do another login to get back to where they're going or somehow find out they can reload their app to try and call async storage again. That's not terrific user experience. Again, it works. You can try and find a way to disable this button on the all blog screen via some static navigation options, which is a way to, you could do that. But there's actually a convenient way of building a different authentication workflow up using React Navigation 3 and higher. We can actually create something called a switch navigator. And this set of information here, uh, in their documentation tells us exactly what it can do, right? Like what we don't want it to do is we don't want to persist authentication workflow into the main screen workflow. Meaning if someone navigates to my all blog screen from a login or register or forgot password styled component, we don't want to go to the login screen. We want to go directly to the all blogs page and not have the ability to go back a screen to a login or somewhere else where we don't want to go. So this can actually help us, um, manage two different pieces of state. So they can see a set of auth screens, depending on if they're registering, logging in, don't have anything stored in async storage, things like that. And they can have a separate stack navigator workflow if they are logged in and can see blogs and all this other kind of fun stuff. So we're gonna go ahead and try and use this switch navigator logic to have an auth workflow and a, um, like main workflow and our main workflow is going to be exactly what we already have, which is in our app container here. It's our all blogs and single blog page. We're going to be moving a login out and we're also going to be creating one more component together here in this demo. So let's go ahead and jump on it and start refactoring. I'm going to have a new screen called auth loading. This is probably not a requirement, but it does make sense in the overall auth workflow. It's going to be kind of like a loading screen that maybe a user won't even see if everything loads up fast enough. So it's going to be a React based component and it's going to be importing a couple things from the React native library. And if you haven't seen me do this before, if I have several elements um, importing from one file, I sometimes like to do it via vertical spacing instead of letting it horizontally go way off the screen, depending on how many things you're going to want in here, right? I'm going to bring in a React Native component called Activity Indicator, which and a status bar, and a view, and async storage for testing. Because remember, the majority of our async storage stuff will actually be from our utility. I'm going to also import our get access token utility from our, let's see, up one into util slash API. I should have, or we should have at this point, a get access token utility right there. There we go. I'm also, I know I'm gonna need this, so I'm gonna go ahead and import my from, <laughs> this is why I like IntelliSense here. So I'm gonna go ahead and do it from React Navigation 
and we want going to want our navigation screen props because I want to make sure I have access to my um, this dot state dot navigate dot navig or navigation dot navigate to a screen right I want to make sure I have that stuff safely typed I'm gonna go ahead and get my generics ready to go state's not gonna have anything in it more than likely our props however We'll go ahead and extend navigation screen props. And now IntelliSense will recognize exactly what um, this dot props dot navigate navigation navigate is. I'm gonna go ahead and do an export default auth loading. Extends react.components class. Gonna go ahead and pass it my props. Oops, fat fingered my IntelliSense there. I did it again, probably because I forgot to write the class keyword. That would actually help IntelliSense tell it what I'm trying to do. So there we go, much better. I was wondering why I was doing that. At minimum, we always need at least a render with some kind of return that returns something. I'm gonna go ahead and do just a basic view. And this is where I'll go ahead and do one of these. I'll use an activity indicator component and we'll right below it we'll put in some kind of status bar from our native components and i can pass in a bar style of default and if you're curious what these do you can head over to the react documentation itself and i also have my debugger hooked up and ready to go to try and save myself some time compared to the <laughs> other videos where i forgot to hook it up and spent 10 minutes showing you guys how to hook it up which ended up being a pretty good a uh, little demo right there for y'all. But we'll scope out our activity indicator. What's an example of this little spinner? That's all it is right there. And we can also have a status bar, right? That will be, um, uh, what's it called? Showing what's, uh, it uses to control the app status bar, right? That's what its purpose is there for. It controls having that header bar in there, right? Like a status bar. So with our activity indicator and just a generic status bar in there, I mean, it's not really going to do anything magical for us. It's just some basic wiring up that you can get from the React Native documentation and then customize it and play with it yourself. Okay, so what we're going to have to do now is let's say we're going to have our constructor ready to go. And with our constructor, we're going to have to pass up our props and type them as well. So props is the interface generic props. We're going to be having some super props as well. And we're going to be running, instead of a component did mount, I'm going to, when this component is constructed, run some kind of asynchronous token call. Now, a lot of the times you'll see these uh, async storage um, class methods with underscores prepended in their name. I've seen that as a common practice in React Native applications saying, hey, this is something to get access token, right? So we'll call it something like access token as our method. And the underscore doesn't really, I mean, again, it's not a syntax important thing. I was looking up earlier if it was or wasn't. It's just a common practice you're going to see a lot when people use class methods doing some kind of async storage work. So we're going to go ahead and be good old coders and write our try catch. I'll log the error, maybe even force a navigation somewhere in here. And we are going to attempt to get a token from awaits get access token helper method. That is a promise, so I must await the promise to resolve or reject. And we're going to say if the token exists, we are going to push to the app workflow. If the token doesn't exist and they have to log in still, we're going to push to the auth workflow. That will be where our switch navigator comes into place, which we haven't coded yet, but I'm just building the component that will be like our entry point. It'll act as the fork in the road to go to our auth workflow or our app workflow. So we are going to say if the token exists, go to app, otherwise go to auth. We could do this with a nice if else statement, but I'm going to keep this simple and do this in line via a ternary statement to say if our token exists, go to app, otherwise, I almost caught myself with a typo, go to auth. And so these two strings we haven't defined yet. And this is where our stack switch navigator is going to be coming into play. Um, okay, so we're going to head over to our app container because I believe we have everything we're going to want here. We haven't used async storage yet, but it's going to be for a little bit of testing later in this video. Moving back to our app container, you should have something similar to this, where it has our screens, our generic styling for our header bar, and you're wondering how can we go ahead and start splitting this up into two different things.
Before I get too far ahead of myself, I'm going to go ahead and not forget this time to import my auth loading component from this directory slash screen slash auth loading. We can probably even move this into a components folder rather than a screen, as technically they never see the screen, as it just acts as a as this like fork in the road for us is all. So it's really dependent up to you where you want to move this. I'm gonna leave it in screens for now. I'm actually going to remove login along with this initial route name from login. I'm gonna set it to all blogs and leave this styling header here. I am going to actually change this const app navigator into our app stack is what I'm gonna call it instead. Yeah, I'll call it app stack because this is a stack navigator for our app. I'm also going to go ahead and create another one. It doesn't matter where we do so. I'll go ahead and put it above here called auth stack is also going to be a create stack navigator that just like the other example needs to have at least one object with some screen names which are going to be referenced as strings along with what screen they're supposed to show. I'm going to say I want my login screen to show my auth stack. You could also have like a register screen, a forgot password screen, anything else that's involved with your auth workflow would come into this auth stack here. I'm not going to give it any default uh, header options here. I'm just going to say go to the login screen on the auth stack workflow. This will be our auth stack navigator. Okay, so now we need to wire in our switch navigator. We're going to have to come up to our imports up top here and go ahead and bring that in as well. Create switch navigator is the... Uh, import you're going to want to have for this. Cool. So from there, we can go ahead and go back down yonder, and we're going to be wiring it in here in our create app container. Our create app container is also going to create a switch navigator now. And this switch navigator is going to be another guy with, you guessed it, yet another set of objects inside of it that will designate our auth and app workflow. I will say our app workflow will be our app stack, which will be all blogs and single blog. And we will have another workflow or switch navigator that will be our auth workflow, which will be our auth stack, which at the moment is just our login screen. But again, you can customize it even further after this lecture. Um, and now, finally, we need to have something initial for this to go to. And remember, that's what we made auth loading for. This should be the first thing we're checking. And it goes to either app, which will be our app stack, or it'll go to auth, which is our auth stack. And so I'm going to go ahead and bring in our auth loading screen, and I'll call it auth loading colon auth loading, aka I can just shorthand it down, as you guys know I like doing them, these vids. We're going to have our other object configuration, which will have our initial route name. And our initial route name here will be auth, the string auth loading just like we've been doing up until this point in the curriculum. So hopefully with everything wired up, when our app first loads, it will be looking at this switch navigator here. And what it's going to be doing is going to our initial route name of auth loading. The auth loading component, when it's constructed, will run this asynchronous access token method that will attempt to get the token. If it exists, it'll automatically navigate to app, hopefully with no back button. Otherwise, it'll navigate to off, and that's where we're going to be testing, because I know we have a token in here, since we just demoed it at the beginning of this video. Oh, and oh my goodness, before I forget, I'm here in the constructor, and I see this extra line, and there's an extra line because we forgot to invoke the access token method. We wrote what it does, but we never actually called it. So I'll say, when this component's being constructed, go ahead and call the access token class method and see what ends up happening. There we go. Otherwise, this wouldn't have worked at all. So it's going to call this access token method, generate the token, and do our switch workflow. When the switch kick fires, we should get our login screen if there is no token. Otherwise, we should get the rest of our entire application. And we'll see if these uh, header options go between login and the rest of the code or not. Maybe the login page will now have no header and just have a login form, with, and that's it. And that's where you can have maybe a, a tab navigator or something else, depending on what you want to do. So I'm going to pop back into my simulator here. With our new workflow, I'm going to do a hard reload, and let's check out what happens. Because we indeed had a token stored in local storage, it uh, we didn't actually see the spinner bar because it happened fairly quickly. It found the token, didn't see the spinner, and automatically realized it has to go to our app stack. And our app stack's first page is our blogs, all blogs component, where everything still works all as expected, which is nice. The back arrow to go back to the single screen, but you'll notice we can't go back to some login screen like we had at the beginning of this video. 
So our next test here, if I can say that one more time, so I think I'll ask that many times this video. We're going to come back here to our get access token, and we're going to forcefully run an await async storage dot clear. And this will literally clear out every bit of information inside of our async storage. I'd actually recommend not doing a lot of dot clears as if you're trying to just test certain things out with async storage or certain keys in your async storage, this could mess everything up. I would actually recommend removing, um, you know, and if you're messing with production values, not just me hard coding a demo, check out async storage, I think dot remove keys is one of them that it has access to or move item where you can remove individual items that you care about and not an entire nested object. So we're going to go ahead and just hard code an async clear and hopefully this will clear the storage. This token get will fail. Therefore, it should go to our auth work screen, auth, auth workflow, which should be back to our login screen. And let's check it out. Save the file, come back and do a hard reload. And here is our login screen. And you see it did not inherit any of the um, default styling from our app navigator. So this is how you can have a custom looking layout across your application. All of these navigators right here can accept these default styling options. And I believe my login screen had some static properties that I will comment out for now and save this file so I can show you guys. You can highly, highly customize these stack navigators, with these headers and things like that, right? So this guy will indeed Go ahead and say login and, you know, coming back to our app container, maybe you want to copy some of these things over with these default navigation options for styling the header, or you can bring in your own custom styled things and custom colors for the authentication workflow of your component. I'll go ahead and cut it at this video because hopefully this little refactor makes sense. If you're wondering where I got a lot of this information from, I got it almost directly from the authentication flows from React Navigation. It's very well documented and shows you how to utilize the switch navigator in order to have two flows of information not passing state across any single one, and all based on if something exists in your async storage. And we'll see you in the next video when we start building out more of our app.